at it. We are back. This is take three ish. Three. Um, and I, I would like to say three is the lucky charm, but we'll, we're going to find out. We've had some technical issues. Yeah. Um, maybe Mars is in retrograde. Who knows? But we're very hopeful that this recording is going to work out really well. Yes. So, Thanksgiving. Did you have a good one? It was now so long ago. We usually <laughs> record this on Mondays, and it was fresh in our minds. <clears throat> yes. And we were feeling very refreshed yeah. from our time spent with family. Right. And now, after three days of technical difficulties, a little less so, but a little less I so. will yeah. put myself back in that mindset. Yes, Thanksgiving was nice. Yeah. My mom visited, so she got to spend time with my daughter, Maeve. Nice. And um, we did the turkey and the whole nine yards. It was it was lovely. Very good. Did you stuff it? We did not. Well. Cody put some citrus fruit in there and oh, okay. like some sage and stuff. Okay. It was good. And I'll tell you what was even better was making the soup afterwards. Oh, you? I did like the New York Times-ish. Uh, it was like a barley and turkey soup. And right. I still got some and it's really delicious. Yeah, I have some for lunch today. I did the same, same thing. And I had a 22-pound turkey. So you I got a lot. a lot of, yeah. No, you that had a lot of family. Yeah. We, I was over in Conway, New Hampshire and um, saw my uh, our, our daughter, our son-in-law, actually saw both our daughters and both of our grandsons two and a half year olds and six years old but and they were great it's very fun to see them they're both growing so fast but Todd and I did a quick zip over to the um, Ella Bean outlet oh along with in Maine it, uh, no it's uh, there's an outlet in North Conway oh, okay where, where there's every kind of outlet you can imagine but it was a three ring circus we did that on yeah. Friday after Thanksgiving it was packed the whole place was packed with all the different outlets but here's my quick thing I go to L.O. Bean to buy socks uh -huh. because I look for them on sale. Yeah. And when I buy socks, they're always got that little plastic tag that holds the two socks together. Uh -huh. And you're using your teeth or a scissors to disconnect. Yeah. L.O. Bean had theirs wrapped with this. You took <gasps> this off Let me see and this. the two socks were on. You know, there was no plastic little tag. Just this held them together. And you could use this for your hair. I, yeah, if I had more hair. <laughs> but yeah, I just have you ever heard of that? No, I think that's great. Brilliant. Little clever. Yeah. Anyway, great Thanksgiving. Awesome. Yeah. Well, and uh, we want to say thank you to everybody who um, shopped our Thanksgiving, yeah. Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal. I think we had a lot of uh, f distraction from our families by all of the orders pinging in, which right. was just, uh, we felt very grateful. And yeah. um, thank, thank you, you very much thank for you. considering us. We really appreciate the support. It's um, This has been a humbling year, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we thought we would also, uh, on this uh, telecast, telecast? No, millcast. <laughs> um, take advantage of a suggestion that one of our viewers put in. Um, uh, her name is Lynn. And she, you know, we've been talking about making tracks, which we have a lot of different types of yarns that we make available. But making tracks is probably our, you know, it's our original one. And we've talked about it a lot, but we've never really explained, you know, what is it? How are you doing it? So it's not that we're going to go into the whole how do you dye it, but we kind of want to explain what is making tracks. And we uh, might, you know, that could be fodder for a future podcast. Yeah, absolutely, Milk absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what, I want to show you first what we're making it out of. This is um, commercial comb top, meaning um, we're not getting this from a farm in uh, New England, which is what most of the stuff we're working with is raw wool from area sheep farms. This is actually bought from a wholesaler out of Boston, a great company, uh, uh, Lindsay. This is uh, American wool. It's mostly a uh, Falkland Corydale. And as you can see, it's fat, thick roving. And that's what enables us to dye it. Um, our machines don't produce fat roving. And we need the fat roving to be able to hold up when we're putting it in the pot and putting all that dye on it. So I want to show you what happens. So there's the raw. And I happen to have a before and after because we're right in the middle. So here's one, this is a new colorway we're working on. And if, when you look at it, you kind of go, uh, okay, it's sort of blotchy. All of a sudden you got this random color, then this random color. Okay, yes, this was dyed in the pot and dried and that's how it came out. And it was, and when we say dyed, it was very much like hand sort of right. painted. Um, and we do right. them in small batches, about five pound lots. Right. And, you know, we're taking multiple different colors that we yeah. custom mix and then we are see. sort of hand working it into the, the yarn or into the wool, which is why at any given point in that stack of, of roving, you're yeah. going to have different, different effects, um, which means every right. single skein is going to look different. But you can see some of the colors just in little sections. So that's this on the before. 
I w it was in the middle of pin drafting, and I thought I'm going to stop and show you what that looks like after it goes through the pin drafter. Ready for the dramatic reveal? This is after it's been pin drafted. Mm -hmm. The colors are um, softer, spread out, they're elongated. Um, so that's the exact same stuff I was just showing you, but so now it's been... So instead of like a, if you want to hold up like a splotch, like right. this is, this is like that splotch drawn out yeah. about six times as long. Right. And then when it goes in to be spun, it's actually going to get, get drawn out, even out more. more. Right. Uh, so all of those colors are going to change really, really right. um, softly and uh, slowly. Right. So, so the big difference between this and what I just showed you is this has simply been run through the pin drafter, which uh, on another episode will introduce you to the pin drafter. But that's the before and after um, on, the, on, the, on the roving. And then what happens next is uh, we... Uh, 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 spin the single, spin the other single, and then two ply it together. And we're going to show you this one. We can do it that. No, no, that we're going to do that for later. This is an example of it where we have wound it up into a ball so you can see all the different colors. I'm going to um, see if you can see that. We'll get you a good shot so that you can see all those different colors gradually changing inside the ball. And then it's also marled, so gradual color change plus the marled where one strand is different than the other strand. So that's, that's what it looks like then as a, as a skein, and we've made it into a cake so you can see the colorways. And then, drum roll, this is then when you have one skein and you're knitting it, it just automatically changes. In this case, knitting from the neck down, and, and obviously, so you've got the main color here is the blue. Right. But everything that's not the blue is actually just one skein of making tracks. This colorway is zinnia. Uh, so all of the oranges into the, the fuchsia and the pink, that's just happening as you're going because you can see in your uh, ball of yarn, as you knit through it, the colors are gradually changing. So in something like this uh, caplet, this is called the shoulder season, and we actually have kits available to make this on our website. Um, but this one, you're getting a lot of color change and sort of these like stripes. Um, so for larger projects like a sweater and like a, a cowl, this looks really, really nice. So here's a cowl example with late October, and that's a full, a full skein of uh, late October with a background color, where at the bottom it started green and then it morphed in kind of a, a warm Merlot color. Yep. And then we'll give you one other example to try to keep making the point. Um, this is uh, Jennifer Steingass's, um, she just got a ton of marvelous um, patterns. This one's called Goldwing. And again, that's one skein around the yoke, started up at the top with that bright orange, turning to the yellow, then a kind of a deep burgundy, and then back to the orange and then yellow. But again, one skein, color, the, 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 the yarn's doing all the work. You don't have to swap out colors. And this one is our World's Fair colorway, and you know we we try to re recreate the colorways as best we can, but yeah. they're from one uh, dye lot to the next. There's going to be some difference. Right. But this is actually the World's Fair as well. Yeah. So you can see this skein is going to yield a different looking yoke. Right. If you start with this outside yarn, you're going to start with this sort of like. I don't know, what would you call this, like a dusty uh, yeah. pinkish blue, right. and then it's going into these um, these different colors, or if right. you start in the middle, you're going right. to start with a yellow, and then work your way toward that dusty blue as you go. So that's sort of where you can decide exactly. how do you want it to look. Yeah. And I just want to back up, because um, we get a lot of questions about making tracks, and just to explain it. So what what the fiber is, starting from there, we get it from a, like Peggy said, um, a local distributor. It is American wool. Mm -hmm. It is 100% natural. It's not super washed. It's just right. processed at a mill that has a little bit different of a setup than ours. They actually have a, what's called a comb. So rather than a carter, they're able to comb those fibers, get them absolutely straight and even. And again, they're going to produce that thick roving yeah, th or what it's called, this comb top, which we're then able to 
to die over in a right. way that um, our roving coming off the Carter, not it is about this size already. And if we tried to die over this in the pot, it It'd would be, fall apart. Yeah, it would It would not hold up well. Yeah, just because it's so easy. I mean, I'll, I'll just show you. This is how easy it is to right. pull this apart, which is great. When you're spinning it, you're able to draft this out, um, but it's not able to be dyed in the way that we dye it. So right. the breed is Falkland. Um, it's a close cousin to the Corydale right. sheep, which we both know and love. Yep. Got a lot of crimp, a lot of loft, and again, it's not super washed, so it does felt um, if you wanted to do projects like that. Right. Um, and it also just doesn't have those sorts of chemicals applied to it, which we really found was important to us to keep it 100% right. natural wool going into our yarn. Yeah, because most uh, everything else that we are doing in the mill is, as I said earlier, um, we're sourcing it from New England sheep farms, obviously a number of them here in Vermont, but as well as in New Hampshire. And we've had a lot of fun working with a variety of breeds, not only for our custom processing, but also when we started to develop our own line of yarns that we want to say is sourced locally. It's been very fun to, you know, discover these farms that have great fleece, but they're not interested in it. And um, we've had some road trips and <laughs> yeah. um, met some great farmers and, and gotten some, some marvelous um, wool to spin. Yeah, so, so we that is uh, for sure, I think, a very near and dear to our heart is like supporting local farms. Absolutely. Start to finish, we get the raw wool in here and we process it. What making tracks allows us to do is a little bit filling our gaps in our production cycles yep. and as well as allowing us to experiment creatively with the dye pot um, and doing yeah. these sorts of yeah. things we would not be able to do with local yeah. wool. Um, and so I think where a lot of the, the unique um, things we're offering here is like this combination of locally sourced uh, yarns as well as locally produced you know spun dyed yarns yeah. we're not we're not getting blanks from china that we're dying over no. we are sourcing american wool from a local distributor and then we take it from there we are yeah. dyeing it in small batches pin drafting it spinning yeah. it and then what i love is that in projects like this um this is the junction cowl that our friend katie steidel um designed for us it's actually using as the the main color a local yarn yep. and then making tracks adds that like pow of color right. that is we know really exciting to all of you knitters out there and us as well and again with this it's two skeins of this is a local wool that's the the, the main color is the blue and then we've got our making tracks right. as the contrast right. color so i think that's a really fun way to you know both support local farmers and get this sort of variegated marled yarn that you don't see very many um yeah smaller producers being able to do right you gotta you you can't do it without the pin drafter um that that's kind of the the big secret when you're buying variegated yarn um more times than not it's a hand dyer who's put the dye on the skein of yarn which means the color is going to transition as you're knitting pretty quickly mm -hmm. because it's only the circumference of the yarn the skein that by, that they have to work with whereas we showed earlier with with what we're doing with making tracks that color can stretch out for quite a while so it's the change is happening gradually which we've shown in the the examples and i think yeah. having the marling too helps that where you've got not only you know, one strand that's stretching out slowly. You've got another strand doing a right. totally different thing sometimes. Right. Um, yeah. So it's. I think it's really fun to work with. And yeah. And it's kind of surprising. You you don't have the kind of control you might have if you were dealing with solid colors and doing a fair isle with blue and then I'm transitioning to green. This is this is a little bit of a surprise as you're knitting along with it. But it's also kind of fun. Yeah, I like to say, like, when I was knitting the Andrea Mowry Night Shift out of yeah. our um, making tracks, I sort of took the first, I really wanted to knit that pattern for a long time. Do you want to show it? Sure, we can show it. You have it then? I, I do have it. Here. Great. So this is this the is, shawl. This, this is the shawl. <laughs> we say, we get a lot of, uh, a yeah, lot of admirers. Look at that. Isn't that one. crazy? Yeah, so I had wanted to knit this pattern for a long time. Um, the pattern originally called for spin cycle yarn. And I, as we were opening a mill, this sort of caught my attention. And I thought if we could do something uh, that I could knit this pattern out of, that would be so great to do it with our own yarn. So we knit or we made six different colorways. And I just sort of, as they came off of the <laughs> bobbin, started knitting with them. And you know what? People ask, like, what are the colors that you use? And some of these we aren't making anymore, but I just tell people. <laughs> and, and let's be clear, the reason we're not making them is that we didn't keep track of the recipe <laughs> in the very beginning. <laughs> I was like, how'd you do that? I 
I'm not really sure. I yeah. know it involved red. I can't tell you much more than that. We're, yeah. we're much more organized now, and we actually have a scale, and we're weighing out our yeah. colors. But <laughs> all, I, all that to say is, like, all of these six colors were just very high contrast from each other. Right. And I think it was just so fun for me. Like, the pattern's really simple, and it's mosaic knitting, so you're only holding one strand at a time. But I don't even have like a cake maker at home, so I'm winding balls by hand. And I had a great time oh, just like yeah. standing oh, there. It, here looking, comes the purple. Yeah, looking <laughs> yeah. at the yarn, seeing yeah. what's coming next. Yeah. Um, and then when you're knitting, you know, this is a pattern you can very much zone out and watch TV while you're doing it. But when you are seeing that yarn change as you go, it actually yeah. makes knitting a pretty simple pattern very exciting. So yeah. I, I'm going to have to try this sometime. It, this is a commitment, though. They also make, there was like a little... Oh, um, that's right. She's got a cowl a with cowl a kind of a point. A cowl that's just three skeins. With, so. with, this, but with the same technique. Same technique. And yeah. somebody I saw knit it actually out of, um, I think it was our Clunning Cotswold as the main color, uh, like going through it and then two different, oh. I think two different colorways of making tracks, which oh, is cool. a different effect because you yeah, have yeah, yeah. just the background being variegated, uh, the contrast huh. rather than the foreground. So huh. cool. that's that. We hope we answered some of your questions about... Yeah, uh, about making tracks. Hope it under, makes more sense and... Um, if you haven't tried it, give it a try now that you know what it is exactly. And I'll so. say one of the big challenges with a yarn like this, the variegated marled, is like we said, every single skein is unique, 100% right. unique. Even so, within that batch, it isn't just yes. batch to batch. Even within the batch, there's a lot of variation. Yeah, there can be. Some some are a little more similar than others. Right. But so uh, we do have retail hours and we do events. I think that's why people love to come and shop in person. They can pick out their exact skein that they want. Right. If you don't live close enough or you can't come visit the mill, we're happy to help you over email. And if you just like a color family, we usually post about five different skeins within that family. Right. Um, you know, it's kind of fun to just surprise yourself with the skein in the mail. You get right. what you get, but... Um, yeah. yeah. Give it a try. Give it a try. Okay. Right. Should we uh, let folks know what we've been doing in the mill? Absolutely. We had a, it was a shorter week last week, so we, we didn't get as much done, um, but we did get some. Yes. Well, speaking of making tracks. Yes, we'll start with our making tracks. So this is the Pebbles colorway. It is uh, one of our more neutral yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, variegated. Um, we're sort of a mix of pebbly colors uh so right. like yeah soft browns and blues and um pinks right um yeah it looks it looks good um and it, it, it it's soft it transitions so it's 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 more muted than obviously the world's fair that we have here yep uh, and, and yeah go ahead well i was just gonna say this one um originally i think sold out with the help of our friend tammy oh, at wing and a prayer yeah. thank she, you tammy <laughs> She knit uh, the Andrea Maurer, I think it was the Inclination Shawl. I'll, I'll link what the pattern was in the description, but it's uh, using like a, a white, um, yeah. sheepy color. Yeah, creamy, uh, a, a creamy white yarn. with this. It was, it was stunning. Yeah, beautiful. So yeah. again, another way you can use local wool with the yeah. making tracks. So yeah. that is pebbles. So we have, uh, and on the other side of the spectrum. And yeah, this one, we're, this one's a brand new colorway. Do you want to talk about this one? I, I love turquoise and I stood there going, we've got a lot of blues, but I just thought, um, southwestern colors and I went you know like to the Benjamin Moore I know this sounds hokey but I went to the Benjamin Moore site and looked up and they, they had this colorway of turquoise and then they had this bright I used what was called sour apple and then a terracotta color and a, a navy and purple and uh, it doesn't look southwest to me anymore but that's the inspiration for all the colors but man I had a lot of fun with this and I, I can't wait to to knit something up with this. This yeah. is gonna pop. Uh, we're calling this one Aurora Borealis. Right, uh, Aurora Borealis. I sort of Borealis. saw the like, northern lights in this one. Yeah, so. especially with that, that sour apple. Yeah, yeah, and this one, it reminds me a little bit of the deep end, but it's like the deep end if you added like the rest color. of the color right. of the rainbows to so, it. So sometimes when we're, when we're uh, in the mill working the colors through, we don't have a name yet, mm -hmm. so we just call it something so we can keep track of it in the system. So <laughs> I called it on my sheet. Turquoise and friends. I love that. Lots too. of friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, and Aurora then you Borealis. Have another making tracks that is oh, not even yeah, off of the. This this just uh, Anastasia just did this. It hasn't been rinsed, but get a load of this. Ooh. I mean, holy mackerel! Talk about Christmassy. It's a. Uh, it's just a really great series of reds and pinks with a little shot of brown. To my mind, you, you guys, if you have a name for it, come on in. But I thought it looked like um, uh, Red Hots. Totally. Did you, you know, those little red, because it, 
Yeah, yeah. I just thought red I, hops. I, I see like, you know, peppermint stick yeah. or, or uh, cranberries or... Yeah, yeah. It's got... So, yeah, please leave your yeah, uh, name, leave your comments if you want. Comment but we'll, isn't that like knockout? Yeah. So, so the last step for this is all we do is we rinse it just because there's there's crimp in it and we just want it to bloom mm -hmm. and then we'll... we'll um, you know, hank it, turn it into a cruller. So this one will be yeah. online soon. Yeah, isn't that marvelous? Right in time for your Christmas. Well, yeah. maybe a little late for this year. Well, Valentine's. Depends how fast of a knitter you are. Oh, it's yeah. great for Valentine's. Perfect for Perfect. Valentine's. I'm getting loaded up here. Let's yeah. see. Uh, okay, um, okay. Got more still in, in our the little basket. Okay, so we um, are sort of rounding out our collection of, of Montedale Cheviot blend solids. Right. So now we have the purple. Yeah. And we also have the ochre here you want to hold up the purple yeah yeah so um we so again sourced locally this is a uh, from a farm north of burlington yep um a, a terrific farm really knocking it out of the park their fiber is so beautiful and you know what it pairs so nicely with the yep. baking tracks like the strands look very, very similar because they both have the crimp they, they're both very crimpy spongy and yarns. you know this is local farm yarn but there's not a ton of vm in it no it's really no 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 it's, it, yeah and having it, said that i'm now looking at a twig i'm going to pull out but that is how you know it's <laughs> that's local. how you know it. right 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 <laughs> so yeah so we we made these two colors and again we're dyeing this in the wool so that it is uh getting all blended together as it goes through the mill right so it's been scoured we yes. dye it right after we've scoured it and then it goes through yep. it right so all of yeah. every skein uh matches exactly every other yeah. skein and they are joining the family here the family here do one of here give me one of the yep. purples there yeah. we go so so very fun yep so we've got purple ochre green and blue we don't have any more creative names for these yet <laughs> uh, no, no. we have creative names for the making tracks these purple ochre green blue but yeah. what color we need i think we need one more color yeah Maybe reddish or orange. Yeah, so you can also write. Yeah, in with we'd your love your like. What do you there. think um, would be the final fifth thing that? Yeah, we're what with? are we missing? I mean, yeah. I think we do a lot of good neutrals out of just sheep color. Oh yeah, we have definitely fleeces because you know you can get a sheep anywhere from white to brown to gray to black. So Absolutely. I love sourcing our naturals and not dyeing those or the neutrals, excuse me. Uh, but but we've come to realize. I mean, what just as an example, when you start saying, okay, well, what about this with this? Oof, I mean, yowzer. That's uh, that's the fun is yeah. you take the making tracks and then you know uh, the purple. Oh I mean, yeah, that looks really fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. So the pile uh, continues. The pile. Right. Yeah, they kind of move from yeah. that right. direction. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the next thing we wanted to chat about was our gift guide. Yeah. It is, uh, we put this up sort of ahead of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, and we just wanted to show it to you here as well. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of ideas from the mill. Um, hey, we... hey, I'm going to do something radical. Okay. Because I forgot something. So you're going to start talking. <laughs> I will chat. I'm going to scoot no, to you the do, middle. No, stay right. We got, just do, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're ready. All right. <laughs> okay. So. The first gift we had was our baseball cap. Uh, this is sort of uh, makes you an honorary member of the mill here. And we're also going to have our tote bags soon. We don't have them today, but th they will be listed on the gift guide as well at that time. Next up, we have the kit to make the junction cowl. We showed you that earlier. So that makes one of these. Uh, the junction cowl is a pattern made, uh, designed by our friend Katie Steidel. And it uses a skein of our um, North Country Cheviot and uh, late October. Um, so the kit comes all nicely wrapped like this yeah. ready for under the tree. Then we've got another kit to make the shoulder season, which is again buried in our pile. Yeah. We showed it to you earlier. Uh, this pattern was designed by our friend Ann Thompson. So the kit comes with the pattern and the yarn to make one of these beautiful caplets that are just the, the greatest layering these piece. Are these are really, you can wear it just like this. You can wear it under a coat. It just adds that extra little Yeah, warmth. you know what I love that for? It was a warm fall for our fiber festival season. Yeah. And you want to show off your knits when you go to fiber festivals, but I couldn't put on a sweater by the time noon rolled around. And these, I think you put them over a sweater. They are like incredibly nice as an extra yeah. warm flare. Yeah. You wear them without a sweater and you can still wear knits when it's like 70 degrees. Right. So it's great. And then we have a bundle. So this oh, well. is a much requested bundle to knit a similar 
night shift shawl right. to the one that we use as our shop sample. So we here. showed this earlier. You want to knit this? You can get there this bundle go. of yarn. So we will include um, the instructions for which yarns to use where in the pattern. But the pattern is purchased from Andrea Mowry. It's her pattern. We will link it in the gift guide. Yeah. Um, but it comes with six skeins of making tracks. And these colorways, like I said, we're, we're not doing the exact same ones. But, but that, similar. that one, very similar. And it's just such a pretty bundle. If you were have a, a you know very good friend um, that you want to give something special to, how much fun would that be to open up? Yeah. Yeah. OK, and then what I ran up to get. You want to show it? Uh, so our last, as you can tell, this sort of goes from reasonably priced to uh, we're um, we've mentioned it and we'll go into them in more depth later on but we have two different retreats that we're going to do in 2023 one in July and it's sort of um, what are we a Vermont fiber retreat but also it will there'll be very very good food local food so that's um, you know come come uh, um, join us for a retreat or come with a friend yeah all right. All right. Uh, so that's good. All right. That's that's what's going on at the mill. What's going on with you as far as you're knitting? Um, I am knitting. I, oh, here. Was. I I was so intrigued with um what what Katie had done, but I wanted to know what would happen if this didn't have a neutral background, and mm -hmm. I um just knit up Ooh. this. This is with that with the the, the uh, Montedale green that we showed earlier. And it's Valley Fog background. And Valley Fog, like the pebbles, is a very subtle muted. So the transition's very subtle right in the middle there. It goes to a little bit of a blue. And it's uh, very dense because I did it on size fives. Mm -hmm. And um, I call them capillaries, and that's not what it is. What's the cable? Caliper cables. Caliper cables, which um, I had never heard of, didn't know how it worked. I read Katie's instructions, which were crystal clear, but I'm a visual person. I YouTubed it. Boom, it was right there, clear as could be. Um, and it's a, it's a two, po two row repeat. And I'd say by the third row, I was like, oh, I got this. And then you can just mindlessly keep going. Um, yeah, I love yeah. how the colors change as yeah. you go. And yeah, it's a very different effect yeah, to this. But very, it shows you can choose any any yeah. solid with the making tracks and yeah. you're going to get a nice. I, so I had a lot of fun with that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I finished yeah, the project <laughs> I started last week, which Oh man, for a newish mother, this is like a feat. Thank you, Grandma, for yeah. visiting. <laughs> uh, so these are the mittens um, I talked about in our last mill cast. They are felted. I knit them out of my hand spun um, from uh, I think my first couple years of wool from when we used from to her own sheep. Yeah. sheep. Yeah. Uh, so they're knit out of Corydale hand spun. And I have a little clip to show you how the felting went, and then we'll come oh, back oh, and discuss. Oh, I love it. it. Okay. So here I am, I've put the mittens in a pot of boiling water and I just added a little bit of dish soap and I'm agitating it with this wooden spoon. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I've never done this before. Um, taking a suggestion off of one of our Millcast uh, subscribers to see if this will give me more control over how much felting happens. I don't know that I'm seeing much yet and I don't know how much it's going to take, uh, but we'll, we'll report back. Well, we've moved on from the wooden spoon method. It wasn't going as fast as I wanted it to, so I'm experimenting with putting them into a hot bath, cold bath, putting them on, doing a lot of this with some dish soap. I think we're getting somewhere. It is taking a long time. Yes, so I had a little fun in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, Peggy has done a lot of felting. She just like makes a bunch of hats and uh, you've, you've knit these mittens before and you yeah. use the washing machine. I use the washing machine because I feel that um, usually I have to run it through twice. So on the first cycle, you kind of know where you stand. Yep. Um, I've, I've had a lot of luck using the washing machine. The key if you're doing it in the washing machine is you can't have anything else in the machine. Right. Because, um, you know, if you use a t-shirt or a dishcloth, the little lint will get embedded into the, the what you're felting. Spoken so, from experience. Oh, big time. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like sitting there with a tweezers trying to pull out cotton. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just like put these on and as you saw in the video, it was just uh, by the end of it, like dunking them into <laughs> an ice bath, dunking them into the hot water, dish soap. <laughs> and you know, I think they could still be felted more, but it's like good enough. Yeah. And I'm, I think uh, yeah. I kind of want to embroider a little bit on oh, the, the, yeah, that the would fronts be really of them, sweet. Uh, maybe with some of my like Morit, Morit yarn. So we'll see. These might make another return in the what are you knitting. Yeah, yeah, week. yeah. That's, yeah. 
I gotta say, sometimes when you're working at a mill all day long, the last thing on earth you want to do is handle handle more wool. On the other hand, I am having real fun discovering the colors that we're playing with. I know, so. I get so excited. And also, you know, it's our job to look at our social media and see what are you all knitting with our, our yarn. And I often see things. It's I'm humbling. Like, oh, I want to make that so yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's nice it, to see what you all there's are There's some uh, new ones that have just gone up. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. Yep, yep. Yeah, so, that pressed flowers is uh Pressed flowers wow. with the making tracks looks so amazing. It so, really does. It really uh, does. Yeah. Well, we thank you for yeah. watching. Um, hopefully we have fewer technological difficulties right. and we can get this out to you a little earlier in the week next week. Yeah. Um, but we'll keep making them and keep leaving your comments. Yeah, about please do. They've way, been very helpful. We want to see um, ways we can improve. And um, thanks for watching. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye.